Hi, and welcome back to the Java Web App Tutorial. So far in this series, we've built a CRM application, complete with a backend database, this listing view where we can both list and edit contacts. In this video, we're going to continue on the application by introducing a new view to it, a dashboard view where we can see the stats for contacts and for companies. We're also going to introduce the concept of parent views, so we're going to add a parent app level layout with a responsive navigation sidebar. Let's get started. And again, before we start coding, I want to remind everyone that there is a text version of this tutorial up on vaden.com. You'll find the link to that in the show notes below. So whether you're new to the series and want to start from uh, where we are right now, download the sources, you can do that or you can find the code that I'm going to type in this uh, tutorial so that you can copy paste that if you prefer to do it that way. So far, our entire application resides in this main view class. So far, our entire application has resided in this main view class that we've mapped with the empty uh, route parameter to the context root of our application. Now that we're adding a second dashboard view, let's start by renaming this to something a little bit more descriptive. So use the refactoring tools to rename this class. And we're going to call this our list view, because we're essentially listing the contacts. It's going to ask if you want to rename some tests, and you can select OK with that. OK, so with the view renamed, let's go ahead and create a new class. And I'm going to call this the main layout. So this is not a view in the same sense as our main view was, but this is simply a layout where we can place the views as we uh, navigate between different views. I'm going to extend from a app layout component in Vaden, which offers a responsive side navigation and a header bar, which is exactly what we want for this. So for the main layout, first of all, let's move over the CSS import from the list view to the main layout because we want to have the same styles available in in both the views. So we have the styles here, I'm going to create a constructor. And there are two things that we want to do here, we want to define the app header, and then we want to define that uh, responsive drawer content. So essentially our navigation links, I'm going to create separate methods for this first one will be create header. And let's implement this. So in the header of the application, I will have a h1 tag, so a header of level one, and we're gonna give our app a name, bought in CRM, like so, gonna call this the logo, we might later on want to replace this with like a fancier logo of some sorts, we'll give this a class name of logo. So we can access it from CSS later on. Then we're going to create a horizontal layout and put two things into it. So first of all, we need to add a new drawer toggle. So this is going to be a, a button that users can use to uh, toggle the visibility of this side navigation bar, very similar to the side navigation here in IntelliJ, kind of hides and shows. So we'll add a drawer toggle, and then we'll add this, uh, this logo that we have extract this into a into a variable, we'll call this header. And uh, for the header, we're going to give it a class name again, of header, we're going to set the width of the header. So we're going to call set width, make it 100% wide. And finally, we're going to set the component alignment for for the components in it. So we'll call header, and set the default component alignment center. So this way, the header text and this drawer toggle will be aligned with each other and look nice. And then we're going to call add to nav bar and pass in the header. So the app layout API is such that the top header here is called the nav bar, whereas the side drawer is called a, a drawer. So we're calling add to nav bar with this header, even though we're strictly not using it for navigation, we're using the drawer for navigation. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so we have the header created, let's go ahead and create a drawer. Again, I'll use 
the ID to create the method. And here, what I want to do is have a vertical layout containing links to the different pages in our application. So first of all, I'll create a router link. So a router link is a is a link to a uh, view in our application. So we'll call this list. And it should point to list view class, Vaughn will figure out the actual uh, URL, and then we'll extract this to a variable. So we'll call this like list link. And then for the list link, we'll set the highlight condition to highlight conditions dot same location. Because our list view is mapped to the empty route, strictly speaking, every single route starts with a empty route, which would mean that it would appear as if it is active on any sing any any route, essentially, which is a little bit confusing. So by adding that will make it a little bit more apparent to users, which link is actually active with that in place, let's call add to drawer. And we'll create a new vertical layout. And inside of it we will for now, add this one link, and we'll get back here and add add the dashboard when we have it. Okay, so let's go into the styles here and add some styles for the for the header and uh, the links. And again, I have a little bit of pre baked code here that you can find in the text version. So I'm making highlighted links bold, and underlined, I'm defining the header padding, and I'm defining the header logo size and, and margins. So when you make CSS changes, you need to restart the server. If you didn't start it already, just go ahead and start it. And let's see where we are right now. Okay, so our application has started. Let's refresh. You can see that we still only see the list view here. That is because we haven't defined which layout it should use. So let's change this to use main layout dot class. And while we're at it, Let's add a page title. So let's give this a title like uh, contacts and Vaadin CRM, like so. All right, I'll build it. And hopefully, if things go well, we'll now see that we have the app layout here with the heading here. We have the drawer toggle, which uh, toggles the drawer, and we have the one link here for the list view, which now shows up here inside of the app layouts uh, content slot here. Very good. So now we have the first part of our, our task completed. We have the parent layout here, we have a way for us to display the links and a place for us to show the views in. So let's go back into the code. Let's organize our code a little bit. So I'm going to create a new package inside of the UI called views. And inside of it, another package called list. So I'll, I'll move the list view and the form that goes along with it into this package. Then I'll create a new package under the views package called dashboard. And inside of that, I'll create the new dashboard view. So for that, create a new Java class like this. And we'll extend a vertical layout same as we did for the list view. We'll give this a page title, call this dashboard in CRM. And we're going to map this to a route. So we'll give it a route annotation. And this should map to dashboard. And use that same layout that we had the main layout that class like so we'll begin by creating a constructor. And for the dashboard, we need info on both contacts and companies. So we'll need both of those services passed in here. So I'll start with the contact service. And then I'll take the company service. Like so I'll save these two uh, fields so that we have them available. Then I will give our dashboard view a class name, like we've done for everything so far. So we'll call add class name, dashboard, view. And we'll set the default horizontal alignment on on the vertical layout to centered so that anything we put in here will get centered along along the middle. So we'll set default horizontal alignment to center like so. 
Okay, so then I'll start adding some dashboard widgets. The first one will be uh, information about the contacts that we have in our in our system. Uh, we'll create a method called get contact stats. I will implement it in here. I'll create a new span and I'll then call the contact service and get the count. So how many contacts do we have? And then we'll add some text here, contact, so people know what it actually says. We'll call this our stats. We'll give stats a class name of contact stats. And we'll return it. So we'll return stats, which we'll get uh, returned here, and then add will take care of that. All right, so this did not work exactly the way I had hoped to. Instead, we'll return the span. For whatever reason, it tried to return a string, which is less than helpful in this case. The second thing we want to show in our dashboard is a pie chart that shows which companies our contacts are working for. So we'll create a new method here again, get companies chart, create it. And here, we'll need to create a new chart. And more particularly, we want to create a pie chart. Now a chart uses something called the data series as its uh, backing data model. So we create a new data series for it. Then we need to go back to our backend to fetch some information. So what I want from our backend is a map of company names to the number of employees that they have. So a string to integer map, call it stats. And we want to get it from the company service dot get stats. We'll implement it here. So to get the stats, we need to first of all, let's create a new hash map for the result. So we'll have a string to integer hash map. Call this our stats. And we'll then call find all to find all the companies. For each of them, we get a company. And for each company, we'll call stats dot put, we'll get the company name, and then we'll put company dot get employees dot size. So that way we populate the map with information about how many people work on each, and then we'll return this stats uh, map. Good. So back in the dashboard view, we now have our stats. So we can go over those. And what we get, like you remember, we get the name and number. And what we can do then is we can call our data series and add a new data series item with the name and the number of people. Finally, we'll take the chart, we'll get its configuration and set the, da uh, set the series on it and pass in this data series. So this way, we've now taken the information from our backend, passed it into this chart, and then finally return this chart, which will get added here as the second component in our dashboard view. Finally, uh, let's go into the style sheet one more time and add styles for this dashboard view. So I will add a single uh, style for the contact stats span, make the font size bigger, add a little bit of margin to it. Again, need to restart to uh, pick up that CSS change. Okay, application is up and running. I obviously forgot to add it to the main layout. So let's go ahead and actually add it to our sidebar here. So I'll create a new router link to dashboard or with the text dashboard and then to dashboard view class like this. I'll press build and let's see if that took care of our problem. So we should see dashboard appearing here. And that we can see both the pie charts and the contact information. You'll notice there's a 
red warning here saying that you're using a component which is a part of the commercial uh, component set of Vaadin, which includes the, the charts and some other use case specific components. There's a free 30 day trial that you can activate by clicking on this, or if you want to opt out completely out of any commercial components, just uh, go ahead and remove the, the chart code here and you're uh, good to go. So we've now completed this part of the application. We have two different views that we can uh, navigate between. We have nice responsive layouts all around and we're now pretty much complete with the functionality of the CRM application. In the next video, we're going to take a look at what it takes to secure a Vaadin application. So we're going to set up Spring Security, a login screen, and make sure that only those people who are authenticated are able to access our CRM. So be sure to subscribe to the channel, enable the notifications so that you don't miss the next video when it's coming out. I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.